Just after the 2004 release of Red Dead Revolver, developer Rockstar San Diego was tasked to begin early development for the follow-up in 2005 for what would become the classic video game known as Red Dead Redemption. I never played the original Red Dead Revolver back on the PlayStation 2, but that is something that I am interested in at some point in the future. I was introduced to Red Dead Redemption just two short years after the release of Rockstar North's Grand Theft Auto 4. Red Dead was built upon using the same Rage engine that was used for development of Grand Theft Auto 4. This allowed them to take full advantage of the 7th gen hardware to give us better looking and running games. Red Dead Redemption was released in North America on May 18, 2010 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. It was then eventually ported over to the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, but still no sign of a port to PC, which is unfortunate. I remember multiple times over the years that I have started and never finished beating the game. However, recently my good buddy Zach was getting rid of a bunch of his old video games that he doesn't need anymore, and among those titles was Red Dead Redemption. I felt that this was a good opportunity to boot this game up one more time and finally beat it for an official review. Red Dead Redemption takes place in 1911 in the fictionalized American states of New Austin and West Elizabeth. With some progress, we'll eventually take you across over to Mexico. You play as former outlaw John Marston, who has been forced by the FBI to take down members of his former gang. In exchange, he will finally be able to see his family again, which are being held by the FBI until John holds up his end of the deal. John Marston is a great protagonist. You can tell that he has actual remorse for the things that he has done. He doesn't want to live this life anymore. He just wants his family back. Unfortunately for him, that will require him to do things for people he no longer wants to take part in. Now, Red Dead has an honor system. Depending on what actions you take throughout your playthrough will determine on how people will view you in the game. Now, you can either be the player that the game wants you to play out and be the hero of the West that helps people, or you can lead into your past and become the outlaw savage you once were. I am a bit of a goody two-shoes and took the path of having a good reputation among the people. Along your journey, you will come across strangers either by coming across them on the road or in town that require immediate help. Or you can trigger a mission in the form of a question mark that will lead you to help them across a string of tasks to complete in order to help them. Those question marks will eventually then turn purple to let you know that this is a continuation of a previous stranger's task. I found this to be a great way to provide you with many options to show your good or bad side with some scenarios on what you will do to complete them. For instance, this guy wants to buy some land from this one man who very simply just doesn't need it anymore, but is asking $200 for it. Now you either have the choice to pay the man the money or find alternatives to acquire this man's deed. Now obviously with this game taking place in the wild west, your means of transportation will be by horse. Traversal via horse is fun and immerses you into that wild west theme very well. You can either acquire horses by finding them in the wild and breaking them in, or you can purchase one at the market. There are many options that come when buying a horse. It will tell you the star rating for that horse and its speed. Now, it is not in depth like it is in Red Dead 2, which I cannot wait to talk about at some point, but it is still good for what it was at the time that this game came out. You can hit your horse at posts. The horse will kick you off if you push it too far when riding. You can even match the NPC speed when you need to follow them on a mission. You have a pretty big map to explore here, and the fact that your way of getting around is via horseback, it definitely feels way bigger because of that as well. You can't just zoom around in a vehicle in seconds. It will take you some time to get around. However, you are given the option to fast travel. If you stop, you can open your menu and select to set up camp at any time. This is where you can change outfits, save your game to progress the time of the day, or you can select to fast travel to any destination on your map. This is a great option if you don't feel like spending time getting from point A to point B on your horse. Now, if you are in town, you can take a stagecoach for a fee to take you anywhere you want to go. In moments like this, you can either skip traveling altogether or you can sit back and watch the horses pull you to your destination. Staying on the topic of animals, Red Dead has provided you with many different creatures that you can hunt. There is even a sharpshooter challenge on which animals you need to kill in order to complete. The animals vary from rabbits, sheep, deer, buffalo, eagles, wolves, coyote, foxes, grizzly bears, and much more. You can even skin them for their fur and meat, which you can sell at the market to earn money. 
I love this as it provides ways for you to earn extra cash along with completing extra challenges to keep the game from being repetitive. The markets in the game range from buying medical supplies which can help in battle if you are in a tight spot, tobacco which refills your dead eye meter which we'll discuss in a bit. You can even buy horse pills that will give you infinite stamina for a limited time when riding your horse. I find these consumables to be very helpful throughout your playthrough and should not be ignored as certain missions can put you in some overwhelming situations where they will be most useful. I wasn't that mindful of this tool and I wish I took more advantage of it on my first playthrough. Now some outfits can be unlocked through the means of completing challenges or you can buy them at a tailor. Some outfits come with certain abilities like the deadly assassin outfit regenerates your deadeye twice as fast or the elegant suit gives you the option to have a card up your sleeve to cheat when playing poker. But be careful because if you are caught then you will be challenged to a duel. Dueling is rather easy and you just need to be quick but it is very fun and satisfying. The gunplay in Red Dead Redemption is extremely fun and it is what's going to want you to keep playing. You have a number of weapons to choose from like revolvers, semi-automatic pistols, sniper rifles, shotguns, and repeaters. You can purchase new guns at the gunsmith along with ammo and items to help you in combat like fire bottles, dynamite, and more. The most addicting thing that comes with the gunplay is what the game calls Deadeye, as I mentioned earlier. When activating Deadeye, time moves much slower and you can have time to pick your shots. Now you do have a meter for this, so you want to choose your shots pretty quick. Once you have selected your shots, just press the trigger and let loose. I honestly abuse this mechanic just because it's so much fun to use and makes combat much easier. Especially when riding horseback and you want to get rid of your enemies quickly by getting those headshots in. Now the hand to hand combat is not terrible, definitely feels better in other games like GTA 4. I wasn't able to counter attack properly or if there even is a way to actually do it. I just stick to shooting people. This guy also just launches me somehow. Now I don't know how long it takes to actually defeat someone in hand to hand combat but after like 5 minutes of fighting these guys I just said screw it. So after getting into some trouble and being the outlaw you were born to be, you can gain yourself a bounty. After escaping the law, you will now have a bounty on you moving forward until you either are hunted bound by other fellow bounty hunters or paying it off yourself. It will even tell you what crimes you have committed when paying it off. I personally love that. Now if you are a goody two shoes like me, you will rarely ever deal with this. But if you like to take care of things your own way, then just be mindful of your surroundings because these bounty hunters can come out of nowhere. Now there are a total of 57 main story missions, which can take roughly around 12 hours or so to complete. I rather enjoyed the story and John Marston as the protagonist, however there were many times where I just felt like the plot kept dragging for the sake of padding out the game's playtime. In Rockstar fashion there are a lot of favors and requests you have to do in order to get what you want. Just when you feel like you're about to get to a turning point in the game's plot, another fetch quest or favor you have to complete. I just wish the game got to the point sometimes even if that meant shorter playthrough. I just hate when things get repetitive like this. Speaking of missions that drag, I understand that the story is really trying to drive home the John is a better person act but you don't have to do that by forcing us to do multiple farming missions. I remember this being a mission that I was going to have to get out of the way at some point. I just didn't realize how many times that the game puts you through this. It is boring and it takes away from what is fun about the game. I had no problem doing this once, but it's kind of like when you are playing Spider-Man 2018 and the Mary Jane missions come up. If you've played that game before then you know exactly what I am talking about. There are also missions that you can only do at certain times of the day. So if you come too early or too late, you need to either go to a save location and progress the time of the day to do that mission or just come back at a later time. Rockstar has done this for their other games in the past, I didn't like it then and I still don't like it now. I know in future titles they finally got rid of this and I think that the time of the day just automatically progressed to the time of the day you were meant to show up at. I honestly forget if Rockstar actually did fix this with their future titles or if I'm just thinking about other games entirely. Let me know in the comment section if you guys know. Now the missions that I had a lot of fun doing were the side bounties that you can do by finding wanted posters hanging in town. Some want them dead or alive and pays more depending on which one you do. I really enjoyed this aspect of the game. 
So I am going to go into some spoiler territory here. So if you do not want to listen to this part of the review, I will say this to leave you off of. It is a great game and you need to play if you haven't already. Moving on. Edgar Ross is a piece of shit. Now, I know a long time ago before ever actually beating the game that John dies at the end. I just never knew the circumstances of why that happens. What I do love, though, is that once after you beat the game, a three year time jump happens. You find out that Abigail dies also, which is depressing. But now you can take control of John's son, Jack. Here, you can finish all of the missions that you didn't complete as John and some new ones that were tailored specifically for when you start playing as Jack. For instance, getting revenge on that face Edgar Ross. This was very satisfying and is essentially the true ending of the game. So as I said earlier, Red Dead Redemption is a fantastic video game and deserves to be played by anyone who loves the Wild West theme and are fans of other titles from Rockstar like Grand Theft Auto. Guys, my name is Pedro Ordonez, also known as Gamelight7. Please subscribe, comment, like, thumbs up. Do whatever you guys can to support this channel. As of the recording of this video, we are coming close to 2,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone who has stuck around. And for my new viewers, I hope you are enjoying this content as much as I enjoy making them for y'all. Let me know what you guys would like to see me talk about in a future video. And I will see you guys next time in my next video. Peace out.